Hello. I hope I'm live on YouTube and I hope you're the, out there. I've seen messages from Iceland, Canada, Spain and the UK so far, all oh, and the Netherlands. So it's really exciting. Hi, my name's Liz Chatterton and um, I am a watercolour artist based in Berkshire. And this is my very first live stream on YouTube. So I'm a little nervous of the technology, but let's hope it all works. So what we're going to do today, it's going to take about an hour and we are going to paint and let's just put my screen on so you can see this. We are going to paint from this lovely reference photo. Um, I will try and put it on the community tab um, on, on my YouTube channel. I tried to do it yesterday and for some reason it wouldn't go on, but uh, never mind. And this, I've got to say a massive thank you to Ainsley who took the photo and has let me use it. And Ainsley is a brilliant artist and photographer from Australia. So this is an Australian horse. So just to carry on the, the international theme, which is rather fun. Right, yes, sorry, I just pressed the wrong button there, so do excuse me. Um, so yes, thank you to Ainsley for this. So what we're gonna do, about an hour, I'm going to explain what I'm doing, paint. At some point in the middle, I'm going to have to um, stop to let it dry. And I would love to just tell you very briefly about my online courses at that point. And at the end, as a huge thank you for joining me in this little adventure, I'm um, going to offer you a 12% discount off my online courses and that can be used over the next couple of days to buy them but the courses last a lifetime so you know that's that's fine um i'm not going to do a hard sell but it was just as a thank you and if you wondered about 12 percent, it's because it's the 12th of july should have done this on the 30th and you'd have been well away anyway right let's um get going i am trying to control my mouse as well as paint so if i'm looking a bit <laughs> quizzical that is why right just move those so i would always 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 recommend that you do a thumbnail sketch before you start painting and the biggest question that you need to ask yourself is you know why why do i want to paint this what attracts me to this um subject what do i want to communicate about it um and i absolutely loved this picture when i saw it because of this wonderful bend in the neck i mean it's just beautiful that s of the neck is fantastic and this lovely soft eye just looking out sort of back over his shoulder at us. And this um, horse is apparently an ex race horse, Australian ex race horse, eight years old. So I just love that S Ben, and that's what I want to capture. So in my little thumbnail that I've done, I've just tried to look at that bend and I've looked at, there's a lovely bend in the neck here. We've got this beautiful, beautiful um, mane coming down here I can make good of. So, having, you know, thought about my composition, I like to think about the size of painting and I'm going to do it as a square composition. So I have it sketched out on a piece of um, watercolour paper here. That's basically a half sheet squared up. So that's about uh, 40 centimetres by 40 centimetres. 
it's a knot or a cold press surface it's bockingford um and it's 140 pounds and i've just taped it down basically to stop it going all, all over the place so i've sketched out that composition as well usually i would do it a bit more lightly than this but i wanted i hope that shows up on the screen and i wanted you to be able to see what i would have done but i try not to do a super detailed um, picture so that's what i'm doing i am trying to keep an eye on all your questions so if you've got any questions please type them in the chat and i will try and answer them but as you can imagine i'm trying to sort of control the technology whoops answer the um questions and paint so if i miss anything please um uh forgive me and i will do my very best to catch up with those questions at the end and answer them so we've got our composition and we've got our thumbnail we've we've sketched it out and we need to plan our um colors and i'm going to keep it pretty simple i reckon i could go for anything because i can have a purple horse and as long as it's um I get my lights and darks in the right place it will still look like a horse so i have chosen some quin gold which is just a beautiful warm orangey yellow very transparent i've also chosen some quin sienna which is like burnt sienna but just a bit more transparent so if you haven't got these colours and you do want to do the painting, don't panic, don't worry. Um, you know, Quin Gold, you could use a yellow ochre. Quin Sienna, you could use burnt sienna. But you could paint this horse in green and peacock colours and it would still be absolutely beautiful. Um, I've also got a Diox Purple, which is a lovely transparent colour. And then just over here, I've got some warm sienna, just in case it, I needed a good dark. So I've got four colours, which I've popped into my palette um, and just mix them up so that they're nice and creamy. Now, it looks like I've got more colours there than I have. There are only four. I've just um, put little spare bits in the, in the wells in case I want to mix, say, the purple and the gold to make a really lovely brown. So, I say, there's just four colours there. Right, let me... I'm going to put my thumbnail to one side, but I'm not going to sort of throw it away because the whole point is it's given me some ideas and it's helped me recognise, you know, that lovely S that I want to sort of use. But I will put my reference to one side so that I don't get paint all over it. Well, I probably will anyway. Brilliant. So let me just check there's no... Oh, the feed seems to be fine when it's focused on the desk area. However, it becomes blurry and fragmented as soon as she starts to move. Ah, sorry about that. So it's a bit jumpy, is it? I'm just seeing in the... Um, oh, now it's gone off totally. Let's just see what's happening there. Sorry, guys, I hope you can still hear me. I am having technical problems. Um, my iPad, which is over, is having trouble connecting with the internet. Well, that's just typical, isn't it? Nope, we're back. I hope you can now see my painting. Again, Right. Oh, I practiced this this morning and I had no problem. So you can hear me. You can hear fine. Hopefully you can see the picture again. Um, right. We will crack on as quickly as possible in case that decides to fall over again. As I say, typical because I tested all of this and it was working brilliantly this morning. Right. 
let's see what happens when I start to paint because obviously my hands are going to be moving in front of the screen. Um, apologies for this. So I'm going to start with the horse's eye because if I make a muck up of this, then I will pretend the internet's, oh, for goodness sakes, it's gone off again. Right, this is me again, starting to look quite annoyed. Oh, we're back on. Right, um, I do apologize. There's obviously something quite strange going on the, the, the internet here. Right. I will start quickly then before anything else horrible happens and I'm going to start with that eye. Looking at the highlights and using a bit, a mixture of the purple and the, the quin gold to get a beautiful warm brown and I'm just going to start painting round it really trying to observe and see where the lights and the darks are. And just getting some good creamy paint down there. Joining up lights and darks. Now I'm getting some clean water on my brush and I'm going to start to pull some of that creamy paint away to soften things off and to, to join up my lights and darks again, leaving little areas of white for the highlight and for the little membranes around the eye. I've just seen a comment saying there's no problems in Spain. Well, lucky you, there certainly seem to be problems this end in England. Oh, joys. So I'm using a little bit of clean water here and I'm mixing the colours up. Shall I get some purple in there? There's a lovely dark um, shadow that comes up the side of the cheek. And so I'm just taking lots of notice of lights and darks, but not worrying about um, colours as much. So I'm always looking at my tones and I'm going to start pulling this colour away up into the shadow area and now I've got some of that lovely um, oh I think that is the warm sepia to make the shadow that's sort of under the mane and then this is clean water just pulling it down very gently it's like I'm stroking this beautiful horse and then I'm going to stroke the cheek and just pull those colours just with the clean water into the shadow area here. So hopefully you can see that and see what I'm doing. So I like to put creamy paint on and then use the water to spread it and to, to just let the water really work for me and paint as if I'm stroking this lovely, lovely horse. So I'm pulling some of that down there. And again, I like to stroke it in the direction that the horse is. Um... Oh, we've frozen again. Sorry, someone said. Frozen in Cardiff. Oh, this is so frustrating. Right, we're back again. Hopefully, let's have another go. How's that? We're back again. Right, I'm so sorry. The internet should be good speed here. Um, and are we back again? I'm just testing. Right, it looks like we're back again working. Hmm. Wow, I'm going to deserve a very nice cup of tea after this because... I really didn't think our internet would fall over. I thought I might fall over, but not the internet. So what I was saying was that I like to use the creamy paint and let it 
flow with the water so that oh i've frozen again um i mean if this carries on obviously i'm just going to have to stop you think that it's struggling on full screen but if i um do that is that going to be too small for you guys to see it freezes when you move your hand well i can't paint without moving my hand sadly um right i am so sorry about this if needs be i'm gonna have to stop and reschedule this and i'm really really sorry um i will try it side by side because we're on side by side now and you're saying it won't be too small so let's hope that's going to work as say if this keeps happening um I, it's incredibly frustrating for you and i promise for me too so what we'll have to do is just reschedule and i'm really sorry for wasting your time um I'm hoping that this will carry on. So let me just pull my horse down so that you can actually see him. And I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do is really look at the pattern of lights and darks and those tonal patterns and just look where, say, there are edges, where there are light edges, where the shadows are and get those in um you probably look at my very anxious face as i keep staring at the screen to make sure that it's uh, actually working oh lordy right so what i would like to do is i'm just going to introduce some of the quin gold to go for a wander through that um damp areas and make sure I've introduced some of that and I need to darken some of the tone down here. So here we go. I seem to still be live at this point. So yippee, yippee, yippee. So here we've started to develop all that area around the, the eye. And I'll let this dry and when it's dry i can go back in and develop a bit more um detail in a sort of second layer now we need to come round into this beautiful curve that i've got here which is what i said that i loved the most and again putting down creamy paint and then using the water to pull that down into that beautiful shape now, what I plan to do with this um, mane is not do every single shape, uh, every single hair, sorry, I should say of the mane. But what I'm going to do is use some tissue paper to sort of break the mane up and produce, I hope, some really interesting marks so I'm going to put some colour down. I've changed to a bigger brush. I suddenly realised that I was just using my little sort of size 7, 8 brush, which, of course, is a bit of a comfort thing that we all do when we're painting. Um, you know, it's in our hand and we use it. So this, this horse is getting to be very multicoloured, but um, as it dries, we know that the watercolour is going to dry lighter. So even though it's looking a tad garish at the moment, I'm hoping we will calm it down. And I'm going to use some tissue paper in this wet paint. Let's just make sure it's wet enough to actually get those decent marks. So a lot of the time people use um, plastic wrap to make lovely marks in their watercolour, but I'm desperately trying to um, stop using so much sort of single-use plastic in my life. So I'm starting to use tissue paper and I'm placing it in the wash. Um, 
to get those marks. The one advantage of the tissue paper is that it dries a lot quicker than um, plastic wrap. The disadvantage is that it gets very fragile at this wet stage. So if I try to take it off now, I might end up with nasty little wet bits of tissue paper stuck to my painting. So I'm gonna leave that in place and then I'll pull that off so that you can see it. I'm looking at the comments and someone just said, can you elaborate what you mean by creamy paint? Yes, of course I can. So I'm gonna bring this over and hope that it doesn't um, muck up the camera. So creamy paint is mixed being like full fat milk. And rather than having a blob of tube paint just sitting in your um, palette, I mix it up so that basically I'm really quick and ready to go. Uh, it, I want it creamy because it's far easier to add extra water, but it's not so easy to add extra pigment to make it thicker. So it's very easy to thin paint, but not so easy to make it thicker. So that's why... Um, I always start with sort of creamy paint. Here, sorry, I just spotted that I, I needed some of that lovely sienna going up through that ear while it was still wet enough for me to do that. So I've put this here and that will take five, ten minutes to dry, I hope, and then I'll be able to peel it off. Meanwhile, I'm just going to put in a really loose and... Um, in fact, I should have an even bigger brush, shouldn't I? Um, just for the sort of the, the back, where the, the main stops here, and then we go into the back. Um, and this is the least important part of the composition. So I'm just using a big brush to add in. You know, it needs a back, otherwise its head would fall off, wouldn't it? But just add in, and I think I might leave this little area down here white so I'm going to use a little spray bottle let me move that up so you can see little spray bottle just to soften the edge and maybe make some interesting marks here but I don't think its back needs any more than that we also need to get the the sort of fringe and the mane um, where it comes between the head and I think we need to get that in pretty quickly because again, I want to try and let that dry. And this is an important area because it will, we're sort of effectively um, painting sort of the area beyond the, the, the forehead. So I'm exaggerating that to imagine that it had more of that sort of mane coming between its ears because I think that's rather nice. Again, sorry, I just need to move that down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So I could put just a little bit of the tissue paper into this area just to break that up again. So, so I'm just experimenting using this instead of plastic wrap to get interesting marks. So we'll see how that goes. Why don't I just check um, on questions just at the moment, make sure, yeah, you can hear me. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Cherry, I can see that. Um, yeah, we've talked about the paint being the consistency of cream and someone's in Canada and can hear me. Well, that's good. <laughs> oh, such stress. Anyway, so just to recap slightly, we started on the eye up to the ears. We've put this on so it all looks a right old mess at the moment. And that's just to add shapes and marks to the mane. And that's what we've done so far. Now, I feel I need to do something with this area because though it is quite light, there is definitely shadow and shade and you couldn't leave that all as um, just a, a blank space. So I'm going to come and sort of connect its forehead. Um, 
if Ainsley is watching this, she'll think I'm talking about her horse in all sorts of bad ways, but I'm trying to always see shapes. It doesn't actually matter this is a horse we're painting. It's a series of interconnected shapes. So what I'm doing is just using some water to come up here. And because this area was wet, it's splurged down into it. And I'm rather happy with where that's going. Um, sometimes watercolour just behaves itself. Not all the time, but on that occasion, it just came down and made a beautiful mark to come in to that area and I'll try not to muck it up but just pull that down a bit more and again I'm just going to slightly soften that light area above the the eye and then make sure that I've got this shape which is like a shadow almost under the the main um, or, or the um, its fringe as such so let me check the time how we're we doing it's, yeah that's okay right this needs to dry and this needs to dry and this needs to dry um in fact just before it does dry i'm going to just put a little bit more dark in there which is the dark behind the um the back and just so that can be all nice and soft and i might pull out a little bit of this extra um, water that I've got here just to capture and I need to soften that off just to capture the light along along the back I think that would be good so let's tidy that up and soften off these marks but then I will have just captured a bit of light along that back edge which I think is better right okay so while that's just having a little dry can i spend two minutes just showing you my online courses um as i say this just needs to dry so if i can just show you um in case you want to do more you might obviously have looked at this and thought well i'm never doing that again but <laughs> hey ho um I'm just going to go here. So I just have um, some online courses, including one about painting horses, but there's painting animals and all sorts. And it's over at Liz Chatterton Studio .co .uk. So that's where it is, just in case you haven't seen it. Let me just do a quick scroll through. There's a bit of blurb about me. And then there are the courses available. And each of those courses has got a bit of information. So I don't know, let's go to the animals course. And it just gives you a chance to see what's actually involved and what's included. So, you know, how many videos, how many reference files. And then there's always a bit that you can preview before you, you buy so to make sure that it's absolutely right for you so that's all i wanted to show you there and you can explore that um at your own time so let's get shot of that yeah right and let's just check questions i can see a couple of comments have come in kelly asks uh so far you've been painting wet on dry yes so it's been wet on dry paper because i want crisp edges but then when it's wet i've been dro dropping extra color in which is a wet on wet technique so the paper has been dry to start with because that helps me control where the water goes but then i'm ad adding extra color okay uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. so and then suzanne has asked how long I'm going to leave the tissue paper on? Basically till it's dry. Because um, if I try and pull it off too early, the paper will just disintegrate. That is the big downside of not using the plastic wrap. So, but I'm painting in my conservatory at the moment um, because I thought the Wi-Fi would be better than in my shed, which is where I usually paint. Um, 
I was wrong. And uh, it's really warm in here. So I think it's going to dry pretty quickly. I reckon it might almost, let me be sneaky, and just lift up a corner. No, it's not dry enough yet. So I think maybe another sort of five minutes and I'll be able to pull that off and show you what marks we've got. So what we can do now while that is drying is do a little bit of negative painting behind the back of the head because we want to capture the light. Let me show you my reference picture again. Ah, have I frozen again? Yes, I have. Oh, good grief. Right, it hopefully, ah, uh, and we're back again. Good. Can you see? It doesn't seem to like me moving, does it? Um, there is some lovely light on the back of the ears and we need to capture that and this lovely light around the back of the mane. So what I'm going to do this time, I am actually going to wet the paper with um, clean water. And then I'm going to connect up because I can actually see that was still wet there and just heard some of that colour to go down the back of that ear. Let me just make sure that's actually in shot for you. Just do the second. So I've left the backs of the ear dry where they're really catching the sunlight, but I've caught the top of the ear that was still wet and it's flowing into this, um, the area that I've wet and it's capturing the light on the back of that ear which I think is a rather pretty way of doing it. And I'm going to do the same down the back of the, the mane, but this time the mane is already dry and I would like to capture a few sort of stray hairs because I don't like neat and tidy things. I, I like everything with a bit sort of fly away and I'm sure this horse did have his mane curried before he had his photo taken. I like a little wildness and messiness. So on this occasion, I put some water down, and then I've just dropped the colour in, and the I love watercolour, how it will just go for a wander. And we've got some little white areas left to give the impression of that mane just getting caught in, in the breeze, and I can drop some extra colour in there if I want. But I don't want it to be too wild because that would just get too busy. So further down here, I'm going to use clean water. And then again, just drop some colours round the back of the mane. So I've caught this area of light by painting behind it. So that's what we would call negative painting. And I'll pull these colours away so that we don't get any, oh, that was a dirty brush. I've just introduced a bit of bluey green, but if I get some water on there quick, we'll be okay. Now, if I haven't left enough white in this area, right at the end, I can always go back in with a little bit of gouache and I can um, just always put some extra and what you can also do, which is really nice, when your paper is absolutely bone dry, you could scratch into it with uh, a very sharp knife to reveal the white paper underneath. But it does have to be bone dry for that. And again, if you want to, let me just tilt my board and that can encourage some of those bits of paint just to go for a little wiggle and a walk through the water. And I think that's quite a nice contrast with some of the sort of strength, uh, uh, sort of harder lines that I've got in the face. Now, let me see whether it is safe to take this off. Okay, I think it is just about. If we weren't painting under time pressure, I think. We might have left that a little bit longer, but, um, you know, needs must. So I'm just mucking up that edge because now I've taken the paper off. I can see that that looks a bit weird. 
And if I pull this up to the camera, can you see the lovely marks that I've got in that um, main area, just to give the impression of some of those hairs? So I think that will be rather nice. Now what we can do while it's a bit damp, if we want to, is take some watercolour pencils um, and actually work in a few, I'm just looking for colours that I think might be appropriate. You can either dip them in water and use them to give slightly richer colour or you can just use them dry and I think that might be quite a fun way of breaking up this main area like this. So can you see like, partly my pencil is picking up some of the paint and pulling it back, but partly it's, it's acting like a pencil. And it's quite a fun way of, of sort of creating some extra texture. And I can even go out through that wet area and have a few of those flyaway hairs that I really wanted um, to stop our lovely horse looking too neat and tidy. So if you hold your pencil right towards the end, sorry, um, then you get a, a looser mark. Um, obviously, I am not in any shape or form aiming for this to be you know, uh, uh, precise and have loads of detail. I'm just trying to get the essence of this lovely horse. Um, so I'm going to use these sort of marks to sort of carry on that and work into that um, main. If you're not getting much of a mark, because these are actually really cheap and nasty watercolour pencils, <laughs> um, I say dipping them in water just to soften the lead a bit means that you get a, a, a slightly creamier sort of mark there. Yeah, that's just the start of the mane. And let's reveal, oh, that's worked quite nicely around the front of the face. Again, can you see it's got some quite nice marks in there? So, I think I might do a similar sort of just some loose marks and come down. Now I need to be careful because I've got to paint through here and I might actually dissolve because this is watercolour pencil. I might end up dissolving some of it. So just before I get too carried away, I'm going to bring a little bit of colour round the front like I did before. So I'm putting on clean water and I'm just looking, I think, a little bit of purple into there. This purple, it's diox purple, is such a strong colour. It's beautiful, but it is very strong and I may have been slightly carried away with it. But um, we'll, we'll worry about that in a moment if that is the case. And we'll just let that go for a little wander and a walk. Okay, let's just check the questions. Oh, someone says, oh, I've lost you. John says, back to the tissue paper. Is it, oh gosh, my eyesight's appalling. The type of tissue paper used to wrap things. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's like gift wrap tissue paper. Just um, sort of crinkly, crinkly tissue paper definitely not toilet paper um, and it just gives quite a similar mark to using um, plastic wrap but of course it's not oops, single use I've just dropped my mouse on the floor and um, it's not single use plastic so it's a little more environmentally friendly and the great thing is so that's the bit I took off you could save these bits and use them for collage and things if you want to so they they have another life beyond, which is good. Um, Penny asks, what brand of paints I'm using? Frankly, I am a bit of a 
bit of a tart when it comes to paints. Um, I choose my favourites from the, each um, manufacturer and I also choose what's on special offer. So I, the purple is a Sennelier purple, which is just gorgeous. Um, let me have a look. The Quincyena is a Daniel Smith, but then, oh gosh, that's embarrassing. Look at the state of that tube. The Quin Gold is from Jackson's Art, so it's an own brand one. So yeah, I totally use whichever ones I can get my hands on and whichever ones I actually um, really like because I think colours vary so much from um, manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, you know, they call them the same colours, but they really, they really aren't. So, yeah, I've, I've, if you looked at my paint box, it's a right mishmash of every brand that's going. Just while I'm talking, was just looking at that shape round the front of the face which was really annoying me so i'm just going to use them just to, just going to get rid of that while while it was annoying me because i want to go round the front and work into that that mane a bit more now that i've got the background on and just vary, vary some of those marks and I'm using oh, all different pencils. I've got an orange, a purple, a yellow, and some sort of ready one. So there you go. Right. So this is sort of assessment time of working out what, um, let's just check the time, that's good, um, what we like that's going on and what we don't. I think this shape up here has gone a little bit odd. I don't like that. Um, I want to do more with this main, especially this area here, because, of course, it's slightly closer to us. And I do want to soften this eye and darken it and, and work into the eye. So I think I will work on that eye just in case we run out of time. But basically, the way I work is... Um, but in this first layer, because that was effectively one layer, I hope to get about 85% of the way there. And then another 10% in this second layer where I'm adjusting things that I don't like or I want to emphasize. And then right at the end, 5% of finishing off. And hopefully that adds up to 100. So what I'm thinking is that I need to crisp up this eye so I'm going in with my nice dark, um, this is just that warm sienna, and just as I did before, putting that creamy paint on, cleaning my brush off, and now this is a, a soft, sorry, a clean wet brush to soften and pull that colour away. And I just want to emphasise that lovely mark in front of its eye, but it comes to a fairly sudden stop so I'll just stop it there then I need to go back into this eye and actually we've got the eyeball here and then this this is the whites of its eye as well so we need to come down there and that actually sort of joins on more like that and it just needs a bit of refining um, to sort of get that working and then come round that really dark shadow around the top of the eye so again I mean if you thought oh I'll draw a horse's eye you would never imagine that it would look like this but we're always observing what's going on and painting what we see rather than what we know um, and then these shadows come up here that's better I think and then we want to get more shadow under under the fringe up here. I think that's and then that comes down there and just gives a little bit more focus to that eye. Okay, if that makes sense. Again, the front edge of this ear is actually quite soft, and I've done it as a hard edge. So I'm going to put some paint on there. And then with a clean 
wet brush I'm going to pull that forward so that it starts to to merge wet and wet just to soften the front of that ear and I might just do the same to soften off the front of that ear too I think good I need to soften off this highlight because and I'm just using some clean water and picking up some of that pigment because I've got that too bright but the back there is a very bright highlight that's where the, the sun's hitting it so I'm going to get my pencil and do more a few more sort of wilder lines just to sort of bridge that highlight my paper's quite damp so I'm actually need to be careful that I'm not just making dents in it which I think I'm in danger of doing Okay, so with watercolour, it's understanding where, you know, what is dry, what is wet, what's sort of half dry, half wet, which is, of course, the total danger period, and just keeping an eye on absolutely everything that's going on. And we do have to have eyes all over the place. I'm going to bring a little bit more dark up there, that lovely fold and just continue it down there and again soften off some of that with a bit of clean water just to blend it in and I just think that sort of brings a bit more focus onto that face now if we come down to the bottom of this um, mane I'm going to again bring my pencils here and in fact, there are some great, there's some sort of flyaway bits that come up over the face, which are, are rather lovely. So I do apologise to Ainsley, making her horse quite so hairy, but I'm rather enjoying these lines. So, you know, it's possibly not what I actually plan, but you, you respond to what's going on and think, oh, yeah, yeah, that's quite fun. So I'm bringing some of that round. Okay, someone is asking, oh, Joan's asking, hi, Joan, what paper do I like to use? So this is Bockingford. Um, it's £140, so actually I am getting a bit of cockling on it because I did put a lot of water on there, but it will flatten out okay. Um, I quite often use £200 rather than £140. Um, I think I must have just grabbed this <laughs> out of my stash so something that I would like to do as well, I'm just looking is to this line that I've got along here was looking too hard and too sort of cut out. So I'm using my little rigger brush and just sort of making more of a pattern to tie in with some of those hairs I put in because I, I just didn't like the, the edge of that line and that just sort of helps. And in fact, oh, that's a good idea. I could use my rigger to continue some of those hairs. And again, if I don't want these hairs to look too meant. So if I hold my rigger more at the end, I'll get a more random natural line than if I sort of try to hold it right down the bottom and be too controlled. So, and I think that will just tie some of the shadow side into the the main side of things right I think we're on the sort of homeward stretch of this in some ways I, again I don't like this mark up here and I'm a bit concerned because I use that diox purple which is a really really staining color so whether I will be able to lift it using this short brush and just ease off that shape at the end, I don't know. I think I will. It's just knocked it back a bit. That wasn't a nice shape at all. So when you're in the second stage, you're looking to refine absolutely everything. You know, you, you're looking to think, oh, do I like that shape? Is this what I was after? You know, um, if I just sort of define that a bit, I think we'll be better off. 
you know, do, what do I need to soften? What do I need to sharpen up? Do I need to lift stuff? You know, what, what can I do to make this better? Um, and, and to actually fulfill my, my vision that I remember, you know, if you remember right at the beginning, we talked about, you know, why did I want to paint this? Um, sorry, you might wonder what I'm doing here. I just think there's actually some quite serious darks in this mane, which I need to tie across to this side of the face. So I'm just going to pop those in and not be frightened of that contrast. And then I think where the mane ends, there would be another sort of probably down here. We've got a bit more of a contrast um, and that will just help things stand out a bit. So just using water to blend that in. Yeah, I think that's better. It just balances things up. In fact, I rather like the shape that I'm starting to get, say here, the light and the dark. So I could use my pencil and just emphasize that. So when watercolor gives you a happy accident or you know something that you, you like that you want, necessarily fully intending to happen you know don't be frightened about making the most of it and and, and sort of emphasizing it because we've got that little plan our thumbnail but we're allowed to change our mind <laughs> i'm delighted to say okay so there we go i think that's quite a lot of our horse done so I'm really at my last 5%. Oh, someone said they're watching in bed in Queensland. It's almost midnight. Oh, Susie, I hope I'm sending you to sleep. I hope you sleep well after this. Gosh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. So what I'm just going to do, I've grabbed a little pot of white gouache. So gouache, as you probably know, or gouache, if that's what you like calling it. Um, that's a bit of an in-joke because someone told me off oops, on Facebook um, for pronouncing it wrong. Gouache um, is opaque watercolour. So say you'd lost the highlight in the eye, don't panic. You could always go back in and just touch things up when it's dry. So I might just want to get the corner of that... Uh, um, What's that? That's an eyelid underneath that I've sort of slightly lost. And I think I might just, because I've got a bit carried away with this um, mane, I might just put a few wiggles of white through. Now, purists say that you should never use white watercolour. I'm not a purist, as you may have gathered, and I very much believe you should use entirely what you want. So, um, but what you will find is white shows up. It becomes obvious that you've used gouache in your painting. It will not blend in. So, you know, just, just bear that in mind. I'm just going to emphasise a bit of this mane and the sort of the, the ridge over there. And I quite like how those hairs were going down there. I'm a big fan of spatter. When it adds something to the um, composition. So I'm just getting a bigger brush, mixing up my gouache and slightly um, adding a little bit of water to it so it's a bit runnier because I would like to break up this dark purple area here and also this one there. So what I would do, because I don't want my horse to be a spotty horse, I don't know if you can see over my shoulder on the face on view, there's a very spotty horse there. But I'm just going to mask the horse with a bit of the paper towel and then just break up some of that purple area there. Do exactly the same over here, just to break it up. And because I'm quite keen on threes in compositions, I might just put a tiny few spots down there. And to be honest, I don't think I can do much more at this point. What I would do is let it dry thoroughly because it's still very wet in places. 
and I would um, let my eyes totally rest as well because trouble is when you're painting you see what you think you've painted rather than reality and then I might just do a tiny little bit of adjustment and I will try not to fiddle um, there's a fine line between adjusting and fiddling but I would do that and then call it a day I reckon so let me go back and look um, Kelly has asked whether I stretch my watercolour paper and the answer is a very resounding no. Life is way too short to switch. Uh, oh, let, let's just get rid of that so I'm going to come on to here. Um, life is way too short to stretch watercolour paper in my humble opinion um, because the trouble is you, you've got to stretch it the night before and then if the first brush stroke you put on is a mistake you can't paint anymore. Um, you, you know, unless you've stretched five bits of paper. So um, I, th I think it's better just to use a thicker piece of paper that's not going to cockle. Right, let me come back and just check that um, I haven't missed. Oh, someone asked, back to the tissue paper. Oh, no, we answered that one. I apologise. Uh, but, 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 but I think I haven't missed any questions looking at those. God, I'm squinting. I think I need to go to the opticians. So anyway, that, let's just go back to our horse. Um, there's something a bit wrong shape-wise, but I'm going to sort that out while, when it looks a bit more donkey than a horse there. Um, when I have um, let it dried a bit, I think I'll sort that out. Or I think it's just I haven't got the dark there, so maybe I'll just get that in because I just don't want to leave it looking really weird. Um, and so if I just get a bit of dark in there, sorry, <laughs> it's very distracting. Um, let's let's not totally mark that up. I think that's going to be a better line. Um, so. Yep, that's, that's the picture and where we've got to. Let me make sure its ears are in. As I say, I will go back and, and just tighten a few things up when my eyes are rested and, and it's dry. So what I wanted to just check, if there's any other questions, do, 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 do. can you write down all the colours you used? Yes, I can. If I can find my little swatch, I carefully wrote them on there. Yes, I did. There we go. So, Quinn Gold, Quinn Sienna, Diox Purple, and Warm Sepia. There you go. So, what I now need to do is give you the thank you that I promised. Um, and I have, by the power of... Um, this wonderful piece of technology. The, the thing is Masterclass 12, uppercase there. And if you put that in when you get to the, the checkout, that will get you your 12% off. Obviously, if you've got any problems with it, drop me a line and I will sort that out. But that's only available to use till midnight on Wednesday the 14th so basically you've got 48 hours to use it and then it will be inactive just so you know that so um, and I have got to also show you that and that is Ainsley who provided this wonderful um, reference so thank you to her. Okay, go back to that and I will leave that at that point. I'll try and take a photo and put it on the community tab on, on YouTube so you can see the finished picture after I've had a little fiddle. Um, but I hope that was enjoyable. And I'm sorry about the technical problems at the beginning. It seemed to behave itself a lot better towards the end. Thank goodness. And thank you so, so much for joining me. I've really enjoyed that. I am off to have a very stiff cup of tea after, after slightly stressful technology. 
but um, I think we've even stuck pretty much to time, which is a miracle. Uh, so uh, if there isn't any, if there aren't any other questions, I'll say thank you ever so, ever so much for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day or sleep well, as the case may be. And um, I'll let you know if I dare ever do something like this again. So take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.